Hello friends, my name is Sachin Chauhan and you are watching video related to the operating system. Hello friends, in this video tutorial, we are going to solve a problem based on round robin. It is a very simple but though a confusing one. In round robin, let's discuss about what exactly round robin is. Round robin is nothing but first come first serve's extension. Okay, because in first come first serve we are not breaking any task. That means the first come first serve was a non-preemptive algorithm. Here the round robin is a preemptive algorithm, and the preemption is based on a time quantum. That means for every process we are having a particular CPU time given. Okay, that means if we have scheduled this P0 process, then the time quantum is one. That means P0 will exactly scheduled or executed for only one time interval that means from this to one gets reduced remains two okay after some time if p0 again gets the chance again p0 will execute for one that means two minus one again one now like this it goes okay so again the very much important part is that in round robin you have to maintain a queue without queue you cannot do a round robin algorithm fine so how to do this i can show you that so start from a Gantt chart. So Gantt chart is like this. Starts from zero. Now check the time quantum is one. Okay now. So at time interval of zero, is there any process arriving to your system? Yes, there is a process arriving in your system. That is at P4. Fine. So that is the process P4. So you can schedule this P4. Now yeah, I I said that you have to maintain a queue here. So P4 and P44. How much time? It's two. So the first process is P4. Now it's given the time quantum is one. That means we are going to schedule or complete this P4's execution only for one time quantum. So P4 for one. So P4 goes and P there is no other process for one. That's why P4 remains for one. Fine. So again the next process is in Q is your P4. So P4 is one one plus one two. Fine. Now check is there any process for 2 as yes, there is a process and that's a P0 process for the burst time of 3. Fine. Now schedule P0 process time quantum is 1 that means 3 it remains 2 here. Fine. There is no process at time interval of 3 that means again you can schedule P0 process till 4. So this goes. Now at time interval of 4 there is process P1 coming to your system. So P1 comes for 6 and it remains P0 for 1. Fine. Now, the next process in Q is P1 process. So, schedule this P1 for 5. Is there any process for 5? No, there is no process. So, bring out this P1 and put P1 back in your Q as it's a round robin. Fine. So, for 5, the next is P0. So, we can schedule this P0 here. For 1 that becomes 6 and then for the 6 there is a process which one P2 process and for 4 time interval as we have scheduled this here so it goes from your system fine okay now again check for 6 as we have we, we have no completed this chart so the next process is P1 in your queue so we can schedule this P1 for 7 there is no another process for 7 that means we are not going to put anything here so P1 goes and P1 goes here for 4 because we have scheduled there 1. Now P2, P2 starts, P2 completed here for 1, it's 8. For 8, new process is coming, that's P3 for 5. So P2 goes here for 3. Fine. Now check that from 0 to 8, we have completed all arrival times. Now it's just only a part we don't need to consider the arrival times we just reshuffle this again and again fine so again if i draw the gantt chart here from like this it starts from 8 so i know that p1 process is the next so p1 for 1 that's 9 so p1 goes p1 stays here fine so my q is ends here so i'm writing here down so next process is p3 so p3 is there p3 for 1 that becomes 10 so P3 goes and P3 stays here for 4. Fine. Now next task is of P2. So P2 for 1 that's 11. P2 goes at last for 2. Fine. 
now next one is p1 so p1 for 12 that means the time quantum is 1 that's why it's 12 and 3 minus 1 2 so it goes here for 2 fine next one is p3 again for 1 that means 13 and it goes here p3 for 3 okay next one is p2 p2 14 and here p2 for 1 fine now again p1 so p1 for one time quantum that is 15 so p1 goes in a queue again for one now it's a time of p3 for 16 and p3 here for 2 okay now again p2 for 17 as it's completes execution it is not going back into your queue so next one is p1 p1 for 18 as again it's completes its execution not going back next one is p3 so p3 19 there is no job so again p3 for 1 and last is p3 for 20 and it completes your queue and the gantt chart looks like this i have already told you it looks a simple but it is not exactly a simple one fine so now we draw a table if you like this video please press like and subscribe button thanks for watching